In Martin Chuzzlewit, Charles Dickens weaves a romance around Fountain Court between Ruth Pinch and John Westlock. It can have changed very little since Dickens wrote of it. You've still got the 17th century mulberry trees. You have the fountain here, albeit it's a 20th century replacement of the one that Charles Dickens wrote about. But here's what he said about it. Brilliantly and merrily, the idle drops of water danced and danced, and peeping out in sport among the trees, plunged lightly down to hide themselves. Well, we're going to leave Fountain Court now. We're going to go to a court that has more sinister connotations, albeit still involved with the Middle Temple. For over here is Garden Court, and this is where Pip was living in great expectations. Well, this is Garden Court, and this is where Pip was living in great expectations when the convict, Abel Magwitch, turned up one storm-tossed night to make himself known as the source of Pip's good fortune. Much to the consternation of Pip, who is now something of a snob and is less than delighted to find that his riches have come courtesy of a transported convict. Dickens has Pip explain that the area has been altered a great deal since those days. Dickens has Pip explain that there have been alterations in that part of the temple since then, and it's not so nearly as exposed to the river as it was then. He says that they lived in the last house on the right, and the wind coming off the river that night shook the walls of the house like the discharging of a cannon or the breaking of a sea. Well, in fact, all the land over here leads onto the Victoria Embankment, built in the 1860s and 70s by Sir Joseph Basil Jett, on land reclaimed from the River Thames. So in other words, when Dickens wrote those words, the Thames did indeed almost come up to the walls here of Garden Court. But there are other Dickensian associations here, not just with his works, but with his life. Because although Dickens was happy to heap a goodly amount of scorn upon the heads of lawyers and the legal profession in general, he was not adverse to participating in its rituals. And just over here is the Middle Temple Hall. It goes back again to the 16th century. And it was inside this building that Dickens came because he enrolled as a trainee barrister, as a pupil, uh, in the 1840s. At the time, he was very uncertain whether this literary career would provide him with enough income, would, would, would last. So therefore, he wanted a fallback, and the fallback he chose was the legal profession. Unfortunately, to actually be a barrister, you must do what's known as keeping terms or eating dinners. In other words, you eat a certain amount of meals in the dining hall of your particular inn. And Dickens failed to eat the requisite Dickens failed to eat the required number of dinners, and thus was forced to resign his membership. But what a little survivor from old London. It's one of only a handful of buildings inside which one of Shakespeare's plays was performed in his lifetime. The play in question was Twelfth Night, first performed in that hall on the 2nd of February, 1602. But it's time to leave now the quiet, cloisterly courtyards of the temple, because we're now making our way back to the rush of modern London. We're going to take a stroll along Fleet Street, but then we'll turn into London's largest square, Lincoln's Inn. Let's go off in search of Dickens in later life.